this is Angela from Natural Living Alchemy. Welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to be making a lip balm formulation. Now, you can definitely customize this based on what you have on hand. So all you're really going to need to make it is you're going to need a beeswax and you're going to need coconut oil. Now, to that, you're going to need a butter of your choice. Now, I'm using cocoa, but you could use shea, coffee butter, or mango butter. And you're gonna also need one liquid oil. And I'm using a sunflower infused oil that I've infused with jasmine, marigold, and lotus. Now you do have a couple different choices when figuring out what type of butter that you wanna use. You basically have two. You're either going to want to use a unrefined version, which means it's keeping its natural scent and color, or a refined version, which is going to be more odorless, all right? However, in the refinement process, sometimes we can start to lose some of those health benefits as to why we are choosing to put these ingredients in a formulation in the first place. So that's just something to think about when choosing if you wanna buy refined or unrefined. Now, another thing though is, so I'm using unrefined uh, cocoa butter, okay? So it has a nice natural chocolate scent. Now, if I wanted to go and put like maybe a strawberry lip balm flavor in here, you definitely could. Those two would definitely complement each other and probably remind you of something like a chocolate covered strawberry. However, I don't know if I would use the unrefined cocoa butter smelling all nice and chocolatey with like a vanilla, for example, flavor. Okay. They just probably wouldn't complement each other. So these are just things that you need to take in mind when purchasing your ingredients. I did recently just make a video on this channel about a cold processed whipped shea butter that goes into the benefits of shea butter for the skin, as well as an exploration in jasmine, marigold, and lotus for skin care. So you're going to also find that in the description box below if you're wondering as why I've chosen those plant allies to go into this formulation. So other things that you're going to definitely find is that full written blog article. Now, what that's going to tell you is the different ways that you can customize this formulation. I have it all broken down just nice and easy for you. And you're also gonna find some links so that you can get some of these products for yourself. Now, just so that you're aware, these are not affiliate links. I actually got kicked out of that program because I didn't have a large enough following, but that's okay. I'm still gonna put things in there that would either help you make these things for yourself or just different places that you can source out your ingredients. So our ingredient exploration today is going to be talking about coconut oil and cocoa butter. Now, before we get into that, I just need to remind you, I'm not a doctor. Absolutely none of what is on this channel is considered medical advice. It is here for education and entertainment purposes only. And it's up to you to talk to your healthcare professionals for following anything that I say. Okay. So now we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about coconut oil. So coconut oil is an oil that is extracted from the meat of a coconut. It is rich in vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and those are gonna help fight free radical damage as well as oxidative stress. And when used in skincare formulations, it can actually help provide a barrier, helping protect the skin against various irritants or environmental factors. Now, the fatty acid content of coconut oil is so nourishing to the skin, it is absorbed very, very quickly. And it actually also has some inflammation modulating properties that can help address any redness, warmth, or swelling that you may be experiencing. And it's also been used as an excellent treatment for cold sores. Coconut oil also has a natural SPF of approximately four to five. Now, let's talk about cocoa butter. Now, if you have the refined version, yours is going to be white and odorless. Mine is unrefined, so it's keeping its natural color and chocolatey scent. So cocoa butter is an edible fat that is extracted from the cocoa bean. And it has been used topically as a treatment for eczema, psoriasis, and dermatitis. It can also help uh, as a treatment for any minor burns that you may have. And it's also considered by some to be the best natural remedy for scars because it promotes the healing process by soothing, hydrating, and just softening scar tissue. It can help improve moisture and elasticity in the skin. And it also contains a natural SPF of approximately five. So those are all of our ingredients that we're going to be using today. So let's just see how easily this all gets put together. 
So we're gonna be making a 20 gram batch, which means it's enough to fill four of these little four and a half gram um, lip balm tubes. So you wanna just start by putting your heat safe container or pitcher on your scale. So we are going to start out by measuring out four grams of beeswax. Now, I was talking briefly a moment ago about refined versus unrefined butters. Beeswax is another ingredient that you can purchase in a refined or unrefined version. The difference, I'm using the unrefined, okay, just means it's kind of this yellow in color and it also has a slight um, honey scent that does still come through. It's very faint, but it's there. If you did not want the honey scent or this um, yellowish color, if you maybe wanted to make a lip balm that was like nice pure white, okay, you just get the unrefined version. There's no scent, no color, no nothing, okay? So we're gonna start out by measuring four grams of beeswax. Now, keep in mind, I have three different versions of this formulation that is linked in the blog article that's in that description box below, okay? I have one that's just the base formula. I have one if you're adding a vitamin, uh, vitamin E or MT50 like we are, okay? Or another one that is going to be also adding a lip balm flavor. So you have a bunch of choices on how you wanna make this and how it's gonna suit you. So we'll start by measuring out four grams of our beeswax. And then you're going to make sure that you hit your tear button if you're mixing everything in your pitcher. So next you're gonna need your three grams of your butter of choice. And then we are going to add five grams of your coconut oil. Now, it's hot here. Mine is pretty liquidy already. We're good. Now, into this, you're going to add, I have mine measured out already. So you're gonna need 7.6 grams of a liquid oil. And then because I am using our um, vitamin E MT50, we are going to be adding 0.4 grams of that into our formulation. Now, this is not a preservative, However, it will definitely help extend the shelf life of the oils in this um, formulation. All right, so you're going to then take everything in your pitcher, you're gonna throw it in your double boiler and you're just gonna let it all melt. So now that everything is just all nicely melted together, we're going to then pour it into our tubes here. Now, you do need to work fairly quickly because this does set, start to set up pretty fast. So what I just like to do is leave the water bath on. Gently take your pitcher out. You're just going to want to pour it in here carefully. Okay. Now, if for whatever reason your lip balm started to cool off too much, as you can see, it was starting to, and some of it kind of just dried on the side of our pitcher. That's okay. If you, oh, don't grab the bottom of it. That's still warm. If you do notice that it is um, doing too much of that, you just want to throw that back in your water bath just to let it maybe melt and it will be fine. Okay. So I am, before I end up spilling these over, 
I'm just going to put the lids on them. Now I'm just gonna let these cool off in the refrigerator. Now, if you were using something like shea butter instead of cocoa butter, you definitely wanna make sure that you store it in the refrigerator to cool off or else you run the risk of it getting um, grainy. I have this one here. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it, but um, it's grainy. It is extremely grainy. Um, it's actually a little bit uncomfortable to use as a lip balm. I mean, it still works fine. And those grains still do absorb. It's just not my favorite, okay? So just a couple notes before I let you go for today. Um, because this product does not actually contain any water, it does not need any type of broad spectrum preservative. Keep in mind, if you are using your vitamin E MT50, this will just help lengthen the shelf life and keep your oil stable longer. Not a preservative though. Okay, now if it's kept in a reasonably dry and cool place, this lip balm should definitely last about a year before your oils start to go rancid, okay? And again, if you're just using shea butter, just make sure that you're throwing it in the refrigerator to cool off, not letting it cool off on the counter. So there you go. Why don't you comment down below and let me know, how do you plan on customizing this formulation? Are you gonna add some flavor to it? or are you gonna just allow the natural sense of the butters and the oils you've chosen to seep through? I'd love to hear about it. And don't forget to hit the like button and maybe share this video with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. Consider subscribing to the channel so that we can spend more time together and you don't miss future videos. Be sure to come back next week because I'm gonna be sharing a video with you on how you can make your own cultured dairy. And we are gonna be starting with milk kefir. You can also find me over on Facebook and Instagram, so be sure to connect with me over there as well. I just want to thank you for stopping by today, and I'll see you next time.